the last part of verse 2, this is very interesting and powerful. From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, which is given from both of them, right? Now look at the next part. So you can only get grace from God the Father and Jesus Christ. They're occasionally used together throughout the, uh, all of Pauline epistles. It's God, Jesus Christ and God the Father occasionally. Why? Because they're one and the same God. That's why. Amen. Look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's right. We should, uh, blessings should go to Him. We should bless Him. Why should we bless Him? It's because He gave us the blessing. Keep reading verse 3. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That's why God deserves the blessing. He deserves the honor and praise, and credit, reward, and glory, uh, etc., power. Because He's the one who gave us the blessing to begin with. He's the one who gave us power when we needed it. Salvation and everything. Now, the first part of verse 3 is important. It says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Keep your hand there. We're going to look at both of these passages We're going to look at Titus chapter 2, and then we're going to read verse 13. We're going to read verse 13. There's a figure of speech called Hendiadis. This is one of the rules of uh, interpretation that you want to know, actually. What is a Hendiadis, Pastor? A hendiatus, it is a figure of speech that is used as a collective form that is referring to the one and the same person. So sometimes there might be two titles, but it's referring to one and the same person. All right, we're going to look at Titus chapter 2, uh, two verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. This is one of the greatest verses proving Jesus is God because it's, uh, it puts it the same. Uh, notice that our Savior Jesus Christ is within the same title together with the great God. Now, modern version Bibles, they'll try to justify by saying that uh, you're just separating the two beings. That's what your King James Bible does. And these uh, dumb, brilliant Greek and Hebrew scholars, which should know better, they should know a thing called hendiatus. Uh, hendiatus is referring to one and the same person, actually. So Jehovah Witnesses, they might try to justify when you show them that passage, you know, it's referring to two separate people. No, they don't know Greek when Jehovah Witnesses pretend to know Greek. They say, no, it's not hell, it's Hades, according to the Greek. If they keep using Greek on you, just show them that verse and ask them, do you know what a hendiatus is? <laughs> so try that one time. So... If that's the case, that we see Titus 2.13, it's the same person, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then look at Ephesians 1.3. This is great evidence over here, okay? The great evidence that it has to be one and the same person is, look at this. Blessed be the who? God and what? That's a problem. If the Jehovah Witness disagrees with you about Titus 2, that uh, God and Savior Jesus Christ is not, re uh, is not referring the title God to Jesus, then point them out here, Ephesians 1, verse 3. It says God and Father. Oh, so I guess the Father is not uh, Jehovah. Jehovah Witnesses believe the Father is Jehovah or is God. But notice that Ephesians 1, 3, they separate the two. So then point them out to this. So I guess the Father is not God. Unless the Jehovah Witness is going to have to admit, no, that's the same thing. Why? Because it's a handy addis, like Titus chapter 2. Okay? So that will be a great argument, all right? So, and I bet you that's not the only phrase. Find Father and God. I bet you you might find a lot. And then ask them this, is Father not God? All that dumb modern version scholar, oh, they made a mistake here. So I guess the Father is not God. That's good, preacher. So that will work against the modern version scholars, and the Jehovah Witnesses. Why? Because they're both a cult. 
All right. So Apologia Studios by Jeff Durbin, James Y. Alpha and Omega Ministries, the NIV Scholars, Translator, all that. Part of the Alexandrian cult, you got to understand. Never heard of that cult before? Right. Alexandrian cult. They're the ones who praise the Alexandrian manuscripts where the modern version Bibles come from, yeah. not the King James Bible. So believe it or not, uh, people love John MacArthur and they love John Piper and these people who seem to be very more Christian than Joel Osteen, which is very true. But you got to understand this, they are still part of a cult. You might say, really? Yes, because it's part of an Alexandrian cult. That's what it is. If a pastor approves of modern version Bibles, he is part of a cult, you got to understand. So think about this. Imagine Walter Martin Ravi Zacharias, who wrote a book, Kingdom of the Cults. Great book. The Lord mightily, mightily used them. But if, they, but if they allow and tolerate modern versions, guess what? They are, they are a cult. So Ravi Zacharias, Walter Martin are describing themselves. Kingdom of the Cult. Alexandrian Cult. That's tough for you, right? You know why? You know why? Because you're not familiar with that cult name before. It's called an Alexandrian cult. They're the ones who do not believe a perfect Bible exists. So believe it or not, a lot of independent Baptist churches who praise Greek and Hebrew, I don't care if they're fundamentalists, independent fundamental Baptists, they're a part of a cult. If they think that the King James Bible is not the perfect, pure word of God. You might say, really, there are independent fundamental Baptist churches like that? Believe it or not, yes. Yes. Believe it or not. Just because you have Baptist, just because you have independent fundamental, doesn't mean that you're right. right. Got to keep an eye out for that one. All right. All right, let's go back to Ephesians. All right, now that I just rocked the boat. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. See, a perfect, pure Word of God issue, the King James Bible issue, will easily filter out all the, all the churches. And you'll find, you'll find truth real quick that way. Oh, it's so confusing, Pastor. I can't find truth. How do you know this pastor's right, this pastor's wrong? Look what they believe about the King James Bible. Simple. Amen. That's a real quick way to do it. And then combine that with dispensationalism. And then you'll find out that uh, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, you might just drop by our church. <laughs> So, uh, obviously around the world, there's more of our churches out there, but in the San Francisco Bay Area, there's probably just one or two, that's it. Maybe three, if I'm going to be very generous. Okay, let's go to uh, verse 3 again. So, bl blessings should go to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, notice over here that uh, the Father is God. And obviously, the Father is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because why? Jesus is God the Son. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So God blessed you with all sort of spiritual blessings in heavenly places. They're all located up in heavenly places and they're based in Christ. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So this is a huge blessing. The huge blessing is this. <clears throat> right now you have a reservation made up in heaven, which some of you don't realize. A lot of you have a reservation up in heaven once you believed on Jesus Christ for your salvation. When you have Jesus Christ for your salvation, heaven has all your spiritual blessings laid out. Within the heavenly gates over here, where God has prepared your home and beautiful place, he mentions over here that all spiritual blessings are within here. All of his blessings have flown down upon you over here. When you believed on Jesus Christ, it's been reserved. So in other words, because it's been reserved here that means right now you have access to all sorts of spiritual blessings didn't you know that you have power because they're all up in heaven you have communication and access to that it flows down upon a believer 
You could, uh, it's reserved right now. Look at, uh, it's the spiritual blessings in heavenly places, right? You know who's already in the heavenly place? Look at Ephesians chapter uh, 2 over here. And then look at verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made, made us sit together in what? Heavenly, heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Is that past tense? It's past tense. It says right there that you're already having a seat in heaven. So, but I'm here on earth. Ah, that's not the real you. This is not the real you. You keep confusing that. You keep messing that over and over. Many times you think the flesh is you when it's not. The flesh is dead to you. The real you is what? Your spiritual nature within. See that? It's the spiritual nature over here. The spiritual nature over here is the real you. The spiritual nature is already up in heaven. And the Bible says, Ephesians 1, 3, you already have spiritual blessings in heaven. So right now you're tasting and you're enjoying your spiritual blessings up in heaven right now. You might say, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's right, man. That's powerful over there. Notice uh, verse 3 is past 10. He blessed us already. Yeah. Spiritual blessings in where? Heavenly places. Amen. Based on what? In Christ. That's the key. Are you in Christ? Yes or no? If you're in Christ, you got to realize that the Holy Spirit, He goes everywhere. So He's not limited and stuck in your body. That's not where He limits. He's endless in bounds. The Holy Spirit's everywhere. Is the Holy Spirit inside you? Yes or no? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit, can He have access in heaven too? Is He up there? Yes. So because of that, that's why the Holy Spirit, it connects to your spirit and up in heaven. And God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's why you're up in heaven right now. You're connected one with God Almighty up in heaven right now. Why do you think the Bible says you're the body of Jesus Christ? Use your head. You're already a part of Him. So for a person to say that you lose your salvation, you don't know what you're talking about. You're already a part of Him. You're already up in heaven enjoying the spiritual blessings. So, guess what you're enjoying right now, the spiritual blessings. All of them are found at verse 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's all your spiritual blessings there. That's wonderful, man. Man, you talk, you talk about... Uh, there's a teaching called Results of Salvation, which I would highly recommend people to listen to, which you should have listened at your basic discipleship class. Mm -hmm. The Results of Salvation is basically all the blessings and promises you gained as soon as you got saved. 